our president, Sister Judith Schaefer, who's going to share some insights um, tonight and, and a presentation on how Cotter cares. <coughs> Thank you, Sarah. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out. We really appreciate your presence. Your presence really supports the work that we try to do every day with your child. Tonight, I'd like to talk with you about a few things that are important to all of us here, basically, your children. When I asked one of our committees what people would like to know when they come to a meeting like this, one dad immediately said, Tell them what you're doing to care for their children. Good advice. So I hope to share some of that with you this evening. So what do we do? In this, our sacred mission. I love this picture. This is a picture that I recently received that I think tells our story best. It's a picture of 11 recent Cotter grads who are currently attending either St. John's or St. Ben's University. And they recently had a Christmas party together, no tree in the right hand corner, um, at college just to celebrate their common history and what they value in one another. And just to be together because they are from Cotter. This is the result of our mission at Cotter Schools in living color. All we do here is to help young people grow and develop their full potential so that they have the possibility of living full and happy lives. Now just look at those smiles. <laughs> so as, we, as I go about sharing some of uh, what we are doing here this year, I wanted to begin with um, sharing that this year I initiated a, a leadership team that um, consists of seven amazing individuals. In addition to all of the other staff we have here who care for your students in so many ways. Working in academics every day are Mary Eileen Fitch and Dave Forney. Um, overseeing the athletics and activities is Seth on. Caring for and nurturing our resident students, and it's a 24-7 job, is Marie Barrientos. Forwarding our mission every day with our advancement staff is Anne-Marie DeMarie and our two wonderful admissions people, Linda Schrupp and Mandy Olson. And overseeing our buildings and our ongoing maintenance is John Brockwater, who is retiring. He announced this year on May 8th, we will, he will be moving on to, uh, I think, the west. No, he's not really moving west, but every time he goes on vacation, he goes west. Um, and then fiscally keeping us sound is a, a new person to our staff, Pam Kimber. And I asked each of them what they're doing specifically in their department to care for our students every day. And much of what I'll share tonight comes from them. So I want to share some specifics um, on these areas, academics and activities, communication, spiritual life, finances, and safety. Not to say there aren't a lot of other things going on and other things we could talk about, but basically I think school's going really well. Um, though we are down demographically this year, um, the, it's just demographically low time. Um, we have managed to absorb the loss and adjusted our teaching staff, made some course changes, and um, from the buzz in the classroom, things are going really well. <coughs> we have, I believe, one of the strongest groups of teachers since I've been here. I'm just thrilled. They're really doing an excellent job. Students, as they have in the past, continue to perform well above state and national averages on all of our standardized tests. And I was very proud to announce that we have four, not one, not two, not three, but four national merit students this year. That's amazing. <coughs> We're really fortunate. So academically, how are we caring for your student in the classroom? There's a million things we, I could mention, but I wanted to just lift up a few. First of all, most important to us as educators is that in every classroom, a standards-based curriculum is being used. That means that in every subject, students are provided instruction at a certain level and with certain principles and standards 
that they are then helped to achieve and attain in each subject. That's really, really important for their own succession in uh, any kind of an educational system. I think it's the root of why our students do so well on the, the test then, the standardized testing. Next, we have um, some new engineering programs, and some of your parents may have heard about them at home, the robots and the bot makers and the 3D printer and the, all of that thanks to a very successful fund and need at our auction last year. All of our junior high students are participating in computer design classes and as well as automation and robotics. I, was, I didn't even know what those were when I was in junior high. Um, I'm most excited about a program called MCIS. Every student is enrolled in what we call Minnesota Career Inventory System. Okay. Yeah, good. I'm good. Okay. Yes, from the principal's good. Um, and this is a system by which each student is encouraged to put in their interests, their likes, the things they've done, the classes they've taken, and to take some inventories that will help them kind of craft out what they might do and what they might study in the future. So I think it really will help us individualize and tailor our education for our students. And that's a program we started the last year or so and we're continuing to um, get students engaged in that. Also, every student participates in a very meaningful testing sequence. That has not always been true. A couple years ago, Mr. Forney and I made the decision that Cotter would pay for every student, every junior student, to take the PSAT. And just by doing that, we enabled students to be eligible for the national merit. Without taking that test, you can't even qualify for the national merit. So that was a simple thing that, and it gives the kids great experience for the SAT, the ACT, so just that one experience alone, I think, has really strengthened our students. And some of our students have and will uh, gain a great deal of scholarship money out of those. We also have a high number of students who are participating in college credit earning courses, PAC courses with St. Mary's, PSEO courses through the state, AP courses, Project Lead the Way courses, all ways in which students in high school earn college level courses and then go to college three, six, nine credits ahead and um, cut, therefore probably cutting their time down in college. And if, um, uh, another endeavor that Mr. Forney uh, and Mr. Hahn designed last year or a couple years ago is every week sending you the weekly academic reports. Hopefully you find that helpful. It's always available to you online, but if you're like me, if something appears in my email box, it's a lot easier than if I have to go do three clicks to get it. So we really want to have you use that. So those are some of the in-classroom things we're doing. That and a million other ones that I think the teachers do every day. The students are very engaged when I go around the classrooms down the halls. They're busy, they're active, they're excited. Um, so, what do we have doing out of the classroom? I'm not sure which is busier, in the classroom or out of the classroom. I think they tie. Um, we have a million things going on out of the classroom. We have, I think it's 23 sports um, through the course of the year. We have a number of clubs, activities, uh, and um, this picture that you see is a picture of the student center. We opened that maybe two years ago or so, and it's open in the morning before school and after school. I was just over there at like five to six and Mrs. Ortega was still there. She said, I can't go home because there's still two students here and it's dark out and I have to wait till their parents come. So it's a wonderful um, uh, act, a, a place for them to be. But when I asked Mr. Hahn what he thought I should mention, he said he felt I should lift up the speech and debate teams. Um, look at all those students. When they started speech three years ago, I think it was with like eight students. 
I think they're now up to 90 or some amazing number. They have achieved uh, a lot of success. There's a speech team, there's a mock trial team that Mr. Hubbard does, there's a, a debate team. Here we have a picture of the debate. These four young people went up to the Capitol last week and what blows my mind is these four wonderful young people debated our um, bills on the floor in a second language. I mean, I couldn't do it in my first language, but and they loved it and they were very successful. So um, we, I really want to thank, um, especially Amy and Bob French, who have really um, shepherded that program and really <clears throat> helped it to become what it is. It's an incredible life skill that our students will be so much the better for. In fact, it was fun today, I walked into the finance office and our two people in the finance office are talking about their high school speech experiences and, how, and what a difference it made for them. And I thought, oh, we should take this for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, Mrs. Uh, Ortega wanted me to share this picture. This is the second annual ping pong tourney. Um, she said that the students already won a third one, but they wanted, now they want to have two a year. And it's just a fun thing that she organized in uh, the afternoon hours and gave away shirts as prizes and, and they had quite a whole structured playoff and, and everything. But that, and that's a wonderful thing that happens in that student center. Um, the boosters are also considering helping refresh that with some new furniture and some new tables and, and really making it a place where young people can be safe and have a good time. We've also talked about, and this is a concern that we'd like to address more, is we do have students who probably don't get as much to eat as they should. So we have also talked about ways that we could provide, like especially in the morning, so many of them rush out and don't grab any food, and so to have something there that they could, you know, a granola bar and orange juice or something. So um, it's just another way in which we really find ourselves, a lot of our students arrive here at 7 in the morning and are here much of the day and night until 9 o'clock at night. Um, they have long days, and so we are with them a lot. Um, Again, over 200 students participated in fall sports. That's about two-thirds of our student body. That's in a tremendous um, uh, number of students. One concern that we raised in our leadership team is, um, one is a concern about the number of students who, because of their involvement, miss the seventh period or much, many of the seventh period classes. Uh, we've talked with other school districts about can we adjust the time schedule, can we do busing. Um, at my superintendent meetings, they say all of their students miss as well. Some people have kind of a non-academic class at the seventh period. So that's just one question we've been looking at. Do we adjust our day so that at least if we were ending school at, say, 2.50, they'd be missing less of seventh period than ever. Day. we have it at 320 so that's just something if you have any input on that that would be wonderful the next area that we um, have spent a lot of energy on this year and I think is an attempt to really put forward two efforts one is to enhance our marketing and enrollment to make us more accessible on a medium that everybody uses the web and social media and also to communicate to all of you what is currently going on. Um, as you know, we've refreshed and refocused our website. Um, I love the picture for uh, uh, right here for All Souls. Um, I'd invite you to on the website we, during the month of November. We're uh, taking prayer requests, and it's amazing how many we've already received. And we write them in our prayer book. And, so you can go online and just click and send in a prayer request. Um, and we're happy to pray for that. We pray every Thursday morning with the whole student body. We've also worked on our weekly parent news communication, trying to kind of shorten it up, clean it up a little bit so it's really uh, concise and you can get to the information you need. Um, one dad told me he reads every single line. So. Um, and uh, a 
lot of you have really um, commented on our strong social media presence through Facebook and Twitter and all those things I don't quite understand. But Facebook, after our dedication of our theater, um, we had a little, we put up a little video of the day and had, it had over 4,000 views just in like over the weekend. So it's, and it had been shared over 50 times. So it's, it works, um, that's what they're telling me. So, so those are just efforts that, as you know, they're very complicated and they take a lot of time and energy and specific skills, um, but um, hopefully they're, they're helping you stay informed and others uh, stay informed. An area that's very important to me is, of course, our spiritual life of our students. Um, we work hard to uh, have opportunities for them in a variety of ways. Um, I love this picture on the left. This is Mary Hansel Harlan, who for 20 years, at 8.05 every day, has gathered to pray a decade of the rosary for peace. 20 years, without fail. I don't think there's a day she's missed. So that's a wonderful witness. And different people join your kids, join your teachers, join your staff, join them. We have daily prayer in our classrooms. We've worked hard to coordinate those, especially during the seasons of Lent and Advent. This year we've been doing a special um, focus on mindfulness, trying to encourage the students to, to center and be quiet themselves down. Not easy to do for some. Um, we have a weekly, uh, as I mentioned, weekly Thursday morning community prayer, which is just my favorite. Uh, it's amazing to be in this room with 400 adolescents, and when I just invite them to, to take a moment and pray for what they need, you could hear a pin drop. It's just really very, very beautiful. Each class has a specific annual retreat. This year we've, we've, we've vamped the retreats. The seniors helped do the freshman retreat and had a great time um, working with them on that. We have monthly all school masses. We have weekly masses in our smaller chapel for specific teams and smaller communities. We have reconciliation services twice a year. We have the service trips and service opportunities through CCMP as well as lots of other service opportunities. And as we did this week, we share our heritage and our mission in a variety of ways like Founders Day and different events like that. So for me, it's a very important part of who we are is that we always find ways. It's, it's not easy to do in a school with a very mixed population of religious belief. Um, but we try to be respectful of all religious belief, but also to share that which is our own religious belief. And over my years here, there's never been a year where um, a student has come, that we haven't had at least one student come and join the church because of being here. One year we even had a mom, um, an international mother, had come to visit and she went back to her country and took instructions and joined the Catholic Church in her country. So the, the kids really do witness to one another um, and that's a really important um, piece for me.